As it gets warmer, we already know that air pollution gets worse on hot, stagnant days. And we expect that with hot, more hot, stagnant days, with climate change, that will lead to more chances for an air pollution episode. So basically, you roll the dice, and you're going to roll the dice a lot more. We expect that we'll see the air pollution season expand. So on the edges, where we're in September now and maybe May, it'll start expanding out. We expect that we'll see the core of the season be deeper for longer. We expect that the Bermuda High, for example, will sit in over us in this area. And that's what leads to a lot of our big air pollution episodes. So all of those are things that we're kind of keeping our ear to the ground for. And we strongly suspect we've already seen some evidence with that just in the year-to-year -year variation between different years. We do a lot of what people call blue-collar science. So we're working with them to try to develop better strategies for controlling air pollution in Maryland and in the surrounding states. And as part of that, I fly a small airplane. It's an eight-seater, and we take out the central two rows of seats, and we put in a couple of racks of instruments, and we go fly whenever the air pollution forecast is high. And we have some particle measurements and we have some gas phase measurements. And what we can do is we can really test the models in ways that they aren't often tested. What we started to see was we started to expand our domain that we had to do to model or that where we had to measure. And we started going farther and farther west, farther to the southeast, farther out from Maryland in my case. And eventually somebody said, hey, look, we got to have some idea of what's coming in globally. So we started talking to some of the global modelers. They started talking to us. They started talking to the climate people. The health effects people have always been talking to us, and they started talking. So all three fields kind of started merging, much as every field in science is doing now, because a lot of the really exciting stuff is happening at the intersections of all these fields, all these fields, rather than just sticking to hardcore atmospheric chemistry or hardcore tornado modeling. So everybody's really branching out and there's a lot of interesting collaboration. We're sharing everything. And in huge part, this is because the internet has made this so easy. So I can send out all of my Microsoft Excel files for all my flights and people can use them. And I can plot up all of the flight tracks in Google Earth and I can code them by the level of air pollution along the track. And people can spin them around in 3D and see very quickly things that used to take weeks or months to do. And it's really been really cool. It's a little overwhelming because you end up with these enormous disk arrays storing your stuff. But we can, you know, with just an external disk, we can ship this sucker around. Even FedEx, you know, FedExNet, uh, we can ship this stuff around to all sorts of different researchers. And then they can chew on our data and we can chew on their data. And we can come back and make a lot of hay out of this. And it's really been this wonderful exercise in kind of pulling the covers and the dust off of things because people really can't hide too much unless they just sort of snow you under with the total volume. But you really start to see the warts and all, and we expect to see some really rapid progress because of this. And I think we've already seen it.